Concerning that the day and hour nobody knows, neither the angels of the heavens nor the Son, but only the Father. Okay. You know, we must say we know that Jesus, he's, he's the, according to the Bible book of Revelation now, prophecies fulfilled. He's the executioner, so he, he, he knows now. Why he was here on earth, he didn't know. Right. But, but Saying God, only God knows. Yeah, but it is. And so what, what Jesus, what, if you continue with that verse, let's, let's continue reading that verse. Start verse 37. For just as the days of Noah were, so the presence of the Son of Man will be. For as they were in those days before the flood, eating and drinking men, marrying and, wo marrying and women being given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they took no note until the flood came and swept them all away. So the presence of the Son of Man will be. Okay. What was Jesus' point that he was making? Because like for some 40 years, the, the, the Genesis account tells us that Noah and his family they worked on that ark. They built mm -hmm. it. They gathered the animals. They preached. You know, the ark. It's going to listen. Right. So did we see the same thing. You see what Jesus said? Right. That's how we'll build. No people would take no note. And like what we, we just told you at the start, this is actually a Bible prophecy. Just turn back. Look at verse 14, 24, 14. Did you read that? Hey, Matthew? Mm -hmm. And this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations, and the end will come. Jesus said that will be happening in the last days. We start off telling you that there is practically no place on the face of the earth where you cannot go and find Jehovah's Witnesses sitting down or doing this. What we doing? That's that's how they they met you downtown. That's mm -hmm. how I, I get to to meet you. And here, when you from from the um, entertainment world, we're the, we're the butt of the jokes. What what do they say about Jehovah's Witnesses? Uh, on the tour. A lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most, most of the door to door thing. Yeah. yeah. Mike, and I noticed it again before before eighty seven or eighty six. Now I, I was in the Marine Corps. I told you, I was overseas. Mm -hmm. I'm in Japan. I'm in Hong Kong. I'm in the Philippines. We saw that these were people with suitcases. With Mike, Jehovah's Witnesses are everywhere. But we see this Bible prophecy being fulfilled. But are people taking note of that? Um. Not, not, and, and not too many people. Way. Yeah, not in a serious way. Yeah. See what Jesus said, just like the days of Noah. And what, what are we telling people? It's like he started <coughs> off. He said, how, how do you become a Jehovah's Witness? You got to take in that for knowledge of God's will. And we're just going back to the basics here. God's <coughs> purpose <coughs> was to have obedient people living forever on a clean spirit I serve. It hasn't happened yet. This almighty God, he's, he's ensuring but this is going to happen, but uh, in his loving kindness, before he brings destruction, he said, everybody has to be warm. Just like Noah, those 40 days, you know, our, it's going to rain. Oh, what are you talking about, Noah? See that? Right. And, and you know, the, in, in that 24th chapter, even though we don't know the day and the hour, Jesus gave <coughs> us things to look for, yes, nation sir. against nation. And as we watch world events, as you well know, we're seeing more and more things happening. The Bible actually talks about what people are taking note. They see the chaos and, you know, they can't believe it, but they're not going to see what the Bible says about no. it. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, it says you will be living in critical times, hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. We're there, look at people, look at the chaos in all these countries. You know, there's a scripture in Luke, faint out of fear. People you know, don't know what to do anymore, especially in these other countries. So we don't know the day and the hour, but as we watch world events, not just our little section, but world events, we see things are happening. The Bible's telling us that will happen in the last day, so we are close. Uh, don't, don't, don't take this as an attack, but no. I, I was doing a little bit of, of research, and I mean, your, your organization is, in the past, have, uh, I did quite a bit, um, I, I mean, they've, they've given a, a, a definite date for the end of the world several, several times. <laughs> oh, that's, I'm, I'm glad you visited because yeah. Pam has been around a while. With, yeah. If you talk about 1975, 
Oh uh, yeah, this okay. is actually it's now, let me tell you about 1799, If you were to go to our literature, you will find that they never ever said that that was the end of the world. What they said was things were happening in the world, but they never, but some took it on, some of Jehovah's people actually took it on themselves, start selling everything, but we never got that kind of direction from no, it was actually uh, <laughs> Charles K. Russell was the, the founder of the, mm -hmm. the Watchtower and Tract Society. He, he was he was the main one, um, and Rutherford mm -hmm. afterwards. Jedi but uh, Charles K. Russell, I mean, he believed in, in pyramidology and a lot of crazy things. How, how do you feel about pyramidology? Uh, well, what is it? What is that? Yeah. With that? Um, yeah. Charles Taze Russell. If you you can you can actually look at his old speeches. Um, at, when he was I have some of his records actually. Yeah, when he was uh when he when he founded the Watchtower Tract Society, he was um preaching pyramidology was basically it was uh one of the great pyramids he believed was that God had created as a second witness. Jesus Christ was the first, and the pyramid was the second witness. Now I believe he believed the tunnels inside the period, the measure, different measurements. Um, related to the distance from the, the sun to the earth, um, the day of the end of the earth, etc. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah. that's where he got a, a lot, a lot of his beliefs when he founded the, the Watchtower and Tract Society. Well, I don't think, well, and I'm not. I have to do some research. Uh, it's he. I, I know he um, had some beliefs in things. But what he taught from the Bible wasn't based on that. He it, it, it was look at look, look up Charles says Charles says Russell pyramidology. Yeah, because I've studied you know yeah. I've studied somewhat, but was and, and even the witnesses used to celebrate Christmas and things like that in his time. Mm -hmm. But it, the light gets brighter. Um, but I have to look up. I I'm, I really can't come on the pyramid thing because I don't remember that. I know he. Um, Something with tombs. I don't remember. We'll have to. We'll have to. Yeah. We'll have to and why that makes me weary <laughs> is it. It seems like that predicting the end of the earth could be an agenda and have a, a purpose for the, the person doing it. Because are, are you familiar with the uh, Bethsaron, the House of Princes, mm -hmm. built by uh, it's Beth Um It was built by the Watchtower and Tract Society by uh, you know Rutherford, Joseph Rutherford. Mm -hmm. He called himself the Judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he, was a judge. he he had it. Oh, he's an actual judge in a court. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he had Beth Sarum built, which was supposed to be, which translates to the House of Princes, was supposed to be oh. for during the resurrection yes. for yes. Jesus and, and <clears throat> you know the Abraham and the the, the, right. the greats to reside in. Now this was around 1940, around that time of, of the Depression, and. He, he was convincing these people <coughs> to sell everything they had to and donate it to Washington Track Society to, to, to build this and um, even even convince them to not have children because the, the end was so near and he um, and he, he was pretty much just pocketing the money and he was residing in this in this mansion that was supposed to be for these princes while you know everybody else was struggling and he he was just you know, he drove two. Uh, he, he drove two Cadillacs, I think. Yeah, you got this mansion. from um, somebody that wrote this. You didn't. Oh, oh no, this is this is facts. I mean, I can show. I can show several. Because m my husband's family goes. My kids are like the sixth generation of witnesses. Yeah. So my husband's family goes clear back to the 1800s, and there was never a time that they were encouraged to give their money and live. Well, I, I can show sources. Um, <coughs> he, I can show you speeches that that he said, and you know, he was saying, "Don't have children." You know, sell your possessions because you're not going to need them because they're so close. And people did that, and then they waited, and then nothing happened, and then he just changed the date several, several times again. So, but the point with, with Russell, you know when you know when Russell died, um, and Rutherford died. We're we're, we're talking 2012. It, it, I'm telling you, I don't even know. Yeah, and brother Russell was a millionaire, and he used all his money. He actually sold his businesses and promoted the preaching work. He went all over the world and used his own money. No, it's, that's because, that? Yeah, that's because he had a uh, clothing factory mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. And that, that's because yeah. he believed the end of the world was about to come. So he sold or... Right. But I, I'm thinking maybe, 
it, it's a possibility that he could have just seen, you know, as, as an investment, maybe he had an agenda to deceive yeah. people, to make money. And he was thinking maybe that would be a better out than the clothing business. Yeah, yeah. He, he was, Brother Russell, his main conviction was to preach the things that he found in the Bible, that other religions, you know, the, the Trinity and different things, his purpose was to try to get the good news of not only the kingdom, but basic uh, beliefs in the Bible that other churches, like the Trinity and different things, but to get Bible truths out there. That was his main purpose. That's yeah. why he spent his money. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have any, any literature that, that is, is every member allowed to see, you know, everything that's, that everybody studies? Is there any, like, Secret books, or right, right. Because I, I've seen, documents. I've seen other religions where, you know, they, they say that you can't understand, you know, you can't understand the Bible unless you, you come to me and I, I, I translate it, or you can't understand how this is until I, you know, is there anything that, that the other other witnesses aren't allowed to see? I, I didn't yeah. see anything like that. Yeah. Like um, we have confidential matters, like elders, mm -hmm. because what we do we strict to the stick to the guidelines of the Bible. Mm -hmm. there, there comes time where ones will have to be disciplined because, because of sins. And so we have confidential matters proceeding yeah. that make sure that we're in, in harmony with with the laws and principles of the Bible. Because that's what I, I came across online was a, a couple elder manuals that that people weren't allowed to, to see. It, it you know it said, you know, don't don't leave the, the book out for, you know, people that weren't in that, an elder at that position to see, so lower followers, and I said women weren't even allowed to, to bind the book, which means that women don't have access to the, the book either. And you see why I say it's confidential? Say, here, let's, let's look at a scripture. Okay. Don't notice what, what happens as, as, as people embrace the truth, some of the things that they're free from. And um, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter six, Page fourteen twenty seven. Fourteen twenty seven. First one, chapter six. And again, this is put on in the first at the establishment of the Christian congregation, right to the Christian in Corinth. Fourteen twenty seven, actually. First Corinthians chapter six. Did you read verses nine through eleven? What? Do you not know that unrighteous persons will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be misled, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men kept for natural purpose, purposes, nor men who lied with men, nor themselves, nor greedy persons, nor drunkards, nor uh, revolvers. revolvers. What, what does that mean? Revivers. Revival? Revivers. When you revile, protest, okay. abusive. Nor extortioners will inherit God's kingdom. Keep going. And yet, that is what some of you were. But you have been washed clean. But you have been sanctioned, sanctified. But you have been declared righteous in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And with the Spirit of God. There's ones that come into the organization where they lay at these practices. This is confidential. But they have to come before a judicial committee, a body of three elders. Mm -hmm. This is confidential.